Eyewitness News is your local election headquarters. Tonight, a special presentation, Rhode Island's first televised gubernatorial debate. We are coming to you from the Roger Williams University campus in Bristol, Rhode Island, inside the beautiful Global Heritage Hall. And good evening, we are live on WPRI 12 and WPRI.com with less than six weeks to go until election day as we help you decide who you're going to vote for here in the state of Rhode Island for the race for governor. It's going to be a very exciting night when we're going to help you try to identify the differences for our three major candidates for governor. Right now we want to begin with introductions and here they are from left to right on your screen. First, independent candidate Joe Trillo. Democrat Gina Raimondo and Republican Alan Fung. And right after the conclusion of the debate, we want to remind you, we hope you can join us for a special edition of Facebook Live on WPRI 12. We have an exciting panel of six Roger Williams University students are actually holed up in a room watching the debate live tonight. They're going to be taking notes and engaging in a spirited discussion on Facebook Live, and we hope you can join us for that starting at 8 o'clock tonight. We do have a busy night ahead of us, and right now we want to introduce our moderators for the evening, reporters Tim White and Ted Nisi. Tim, take it away. All right, thank you, Danielle. And a reminder to our live audience to please hold your applause and reaction so everyone at home and everyone here at Roger Williams University can hear from the candidates. Now, each candidate will get a 60-second closing statement at the end of the debate. Mr. Trillo, Ms. Raimondo, Mr. Fung, thank you very much for joining us here tonight. As you all know, there is no strict format to tonight's debate. We're looking for an open and honest discussion of the issues, but if you're not answering the question or you're taking too long, we will uh, jump in. Let's begin. Ms. Raimondo, I'm going to start with you. Perhaps the single biggest knock on your administration is the botched rollout of the UHIP computer system. Needy people didn't get their food stamps, nursing homes didn't get paid on time, and it's still not 100% working. The projected cost is now $648 million. Of that, almost $140 million is state taxpayer dollars. This was the biggest IT rollout in state history. In the private sector, this could be a fireable offense. Why isn't it with you? Yeah. Thank you, Tim, and good evening, and good evening to Rhode Island. It is uh, wonderful to have this opportunity to be here and discuss the issues tonight. Um, as you say, Tim, the UHIP rollout, which was a project which I inherited, has had its share of struggles. Um, we have turned the corner, and that is important. We've turned the corner. We are paying our claims uh, faster than we ever have, actually faster than Massachusetts, faster than most of our neighbors. Uh, we are, you know, if you go there on the first of the month, the lobbies are flowing. You don't see the lines that you used to see before the system or d during the system. So, um, and great credit, by the way, goes to the staff, state employees, who have struggled with the system for two years. So by and large, we have turned the corner. Having said that, um, I, mistakes were made, which I've owned. Uh, the, the system was a system started in the prior administration. It was actually required by the federal government because our system had been so antiquated. Mr. Mundo, I've heard you say you've inherited the problem before and uh, you got it from the prior administration. And while that's true, um, you didn't inherit the timing, right? Yes. It was launched a year and a half into your tenure and despite a, le a letter recommending against starting it from the federal government. So you were warned. Absolutely, and as I said, that was a mistake. That was a mistake, I've apologized, and we've stayed at it. And the good news is we are turning the corner and we haven't paid our vendor in a year and a half. We've gotten more than $60 million back from the vendor and we're not done yet. And I am committed to the people of Rhode Island to stay at it and do everything I know how to do until we get every penny back and until the system works. But I'll say this, Tim. It was a bungled IT rollout. There's no way around that. And I've owned that mistake. UHIP is a system, though, that provides um, mainly health care, as you said, Medicaid to people. And in this regard, there is a clear contrast between myself and my opponents. All 
I've done as governor since day one has been to protect the Affordable Care Act and make sure that Rhode Islanders get their health care. Okay, I don't want to pivot to the ACA. That would be a, a really long but conversation. Actually, but actually, Tim, it's very relevant. Well, hold on. I want to, I, I want to fold IT, in your... I want, no, it, uh, uh, that's off the track from you, Hip. I think. Mr. Fung, I want to fold you in on this. You've been a vocal critic of the governor's management skills here, but when the state police were brought in to investigate your police department, they found, and I'm going to quote from their report, Mayor Fung failed to take the necessary and appropriate corrective actions, which empowered others to continue to make unprofessional decisions. How can people have the confidence that you can manage a massive situation like UHIP when you are unable to manage your own police department? You know, first, thanks, Channel 12 and Roger Williams. And that's a uh, very pointed question. And one, unlike the governor, right from the get-go, I accepted full responsibility for what happened in that police department and whatever was in that police report. I called in the state police. I was the one that fixed the problem right from the get-go, unlike the governor in UHIP. That disaster is still ongoing, no end in sight. I was the one that brought in, for the first time in the city's history, the number two from the state police. After the city council uh, was going to pass a resolution uh, to bring in the state police. So I just want to make sure we correct the timing on that. Well, let me uh, push back on you on that, Tim, because I was having conversations with then Colonel O'Donnell even before that was going to happen. But it just doesn't take, you know, a flip of a switch. I was the one that brought the state police in. Let's be clear about that. And I've accepted full responsibility from day one. We fixed it. Morale is up in that department. The police department is doing excellent work. And the people who would have been impacted the most Cranston residents saw that I fixed it and overwhelmingly re-elected me 70-30 in the last election. That's confidence that I want all Rhode Islanders to know. Unlike the governor's uh, failed UHIP problem, I can empathize with what happened with many Rhode Islanders, many families, many seniors, many kids that were waiting for months for just an answer or even a phone call back. Now, I've told this story before about my father. The one time in his life he needed benefits because he had Parkinson's, he had to go into uh, a long-term care facility, uh, a nursing home. You know, he did everything right, spent down, put his application in, and he lost his application not once, but twice. Seven months my family was left wondering. And that is still going on to this day. I'm not sure whether that uh, UHIP system is ever going to be fixed. On day one of a Fung administration, I will pull the plug. I will fire Deloitte. This governor has a problem holding people accountable. What's it take, governor? to fire someone in your administration. Before we get to Mr. Yeah, Trillo, yeah, I will allow you to please. respond. I mean, he has a point. He says yes. he won 70-30. was actually 68%, but uh, he was he was re-elected uh, governor. Yeah. First of all, I'm sorry, Alan, about your father, and I'm sorry to all Rhode Islanders who were caught up in it, but we have turned the corner, and we are paying uh, benefits on time. There is a very big difference between a bungled IT rollout and public corruption. When the Rhode Island State Police had to take over Cranston City Police and were there for nearly a year, the Rhode Island State Police issued a report. And in their words, not my words, the Rhode Island State Police said that under Mayor Fung, Cranston's police department was run, quote unquote, like the mafia. And the mayor himself interfered into police business on behalf of his friends. That is public corruption. That is the culture of insiders that has held this state back for too long. And it's time for change. All right, I want to get this conversation back on track with UHIP. And we'll go to you, Mr. Trillo. You were in the General Assembly while the UHIP budget kept going up, first under Governor Chafee and then under Governor Raimondo. But unlike Mr. Fung, you could have had a direct impact in intervention here as a lawmaker. Where were you? First of all, I would like to thank the university for hosting this event. I'd like to thank you, Tim, Ted, and Danielle for also hosting it. Um, let me just make a comment about what's been happening with UHIP. Uh, first of all, I think it's interesting, only in Rhode Island, would we have a governor's race where we have a governor who lost a billion and a half dollars of taxpayer money and we have a mayor that's been accused by the Rhode Island Police Department of running a criminal enterprise running for governor only in Rhode Island and we wonder why we have a bad reputation when I was in the General Assembly, Tim, I was one of 75. I always fought for the taxpayers. 
in anybody that wants to see me in action fighting for the taxpayers, I welcome you to either go on my website or, or Google it and you will see a, a lot of fights I had. Maybe I missed it, but I didn't see you fighting on the UHIP issue. The UHIP issue wasn't the issue that it is today back then. There were plenty of reports. I was out of office in 2016. Sure, but there were reports from the legislature's own experts raising attention to the growing cost of UHIP while you were in office. The UHIP, they didn't throw the switch on UHIP, I believe, until the latter part of 2016. We didn't know anywhere near. She's lost $635 million with UHIP. When do you say enough is enough? Understand what happened. What happened was they built a huge brick wall and they put 250,000 people up on the wall. That's the computer system. They linked it with mortar joints that turned to jelly and the bricks were popping out. And for two years we've watched uh, the computer people try to push them back in and they slid out here and there. We have a flawed system and unless it's corrected from the bottom up, it's never going to work right. I commend you for a very visual answer. Before I turn it over to Ted, um, let me Ted, just before, ask you, hold no, on Mr. Fung, would you end the contract with Deloitte like Mr. Fung uh, is calling for if you became governor? Yes or no, Mr. Trillo? Would I? Yes. I would first have to evaluate where the system is right now, but if it's, if it's in the disastrous state I believe it is, what I would do is go back with a new contractor, rebuild it from the middle out, put a, ba a basic database in so we don't keep losing people out of the system, and then build it out to function at different levels. So we want it to, to make sure people aren't dead that are collecting. We want to make sure they're not collecting twice. Those are all the add-ons. All right. Thank you, Mr. Joe. Mr. Fung, I don't want to litigate this all night, no, so I, I will give be, you 30 seconds for the last. I got hit by both these individuals, both State House insiders, Joe for 16 years, who, by the way, he wants to say he's been fighting. He was one of the individuals in our state that voted for 38 Studios, joining all leadership. Excuse you know, what me, kind of fighter was that? And by the way, by I the way, voted for Joe, please, if I can finish my, if I can finish, Joe, please. All right, Mr. Joe, Trillo, Mr. Joe, Trillo, thank Joe, you. please, let me finish. And sitting next to me. If finish, why don't you tell the Mr. truth? Mr. Trillo, please. Mr. Trillo, please. I gave you appropriate time. And as to the governor, another insider that's been up there for eight years walking the halls. But take a look at her first steps, who she hired, political insiders. The revolving door law was slapped in Don Lally's face when she put him in DBR. DHS, that UHIP disaster, the uh, executive director of the Democratic Party who had no experience. This is the culture that I will fight and make sure we have competent people uh, in all departments. Tim, may I have 30 uh, yeah, seconds? I'm going to give you 30 seconds. We're going to end this. It is laughable to call me an insider. The mayor has been mayor more than twice as long as I've been governor. And what does he have to show for it? One of the highest tax cities in the state. It's officially a distressed city as recognized by the state. Underfunded pensions and as we've already gone through, a history of public corruption in the police department. So to say that he's not an insider is laughable, and that sort of public corruption has held this state back for too long, and all I've done since being governor is bring change to Rhode Island. All right, thank you very much, Ted. Let's move on to the economy. It's always one of the top issues we hear from voters about, so I want to ask each of you about your plans and your records. Mr. Fung, I'll give you the first question. You want to lower the Rhode Island sales tax to 5% by the year 2022 which would be the end of your first term. With the state already expecting to have a big budget shortfall, your tax cut could increase the deficit to potentially half a billion dollars that year. Would you consider cuts in the two biggest parts of the budget, social services and education, to help pay for your sales tax plan? Let me tell you where I'm going to find the cuts to pay for my uh, tax plan, Ted. You know, one of the biggest cuts that will be coming is I'm going to reshape Commerce RI, or whatever you know people call it nowadays, uh, that was responsible for 30 38 studios. We've got to stop that culture of 38 studios, uh, the culture that the governor subscribes to of corporate welfare. That uh, rebuild RI, those millions that have been given for many uh, developments that uh, produce only a few construction jobs, no long-term jobs, that's going to be dramatically reformed and many of those millions are going to be cut. I'm also going to go after many of the uh, six-figure uh, jobs that the governor has added, middle management job on top of middle management job. We are going to go after every single
build an apartment where she's added so much waste, we are also going to add an Office of Inspector General to root out waste and fraud in many departments across state government. Mr. Fung, I've covered a lot of budgets, and in the end, I find governors all often have to look to social services and education because they're such a large part of the budget. Are those off the table for you, or will you look there if these other savings are not enough? Uh, Ted, I've actually uh, put out my platform on a couple of those areas. You know, I support having um, photo IDs on EBT cards to root out waste, to stop that practice that many of us hear about, about selling EBT cards for 50 cents on a dollar. I also support, for able-bodied people on welfare, stricter work requirements. That will help count down the system, this culture of dependency. Governor, he says that you're into corporate welfare and that's your strategy, your response. Uh, thank you. My response is, when I ran for governor, we had one of the highest unemployment rates of the country. In fact, for most of the year that I ran, we had the, the highest unemployment rate in the country. In some industries, like the building trades, unemployment was over 20%. People were hurting and had been out of work for a year or two. So I did get to work. I got to work changing the way we do economic development. And, you know, the, with reference to 38 Studios, 38 Studios was a special deal for a special person. So I completely changed the way we do economic development, and I put in a new strategy, a strategy of investing in small businesses, investing in infrastructure, uh, making it easier to do business, and incentives. The incentives um, were modeled on programs in nearly every other state. 36 states have similar programs, and they have had for a long time. You know, our progress isn't by accident, it's because we've been working. So now let's look at the program that the mayor references. That one program, Rebuild Rhode Island, has created over 10,000 jobs since I've been governor. Average salary, $65,000 a year. He opposes that plan. He's going to come in and unwind that program, and people will lose their jobs. Governor, you, and, we've and heard I, a lot I, from I you during this thing, campaign Ted. about your record on the economy. You've said it's a big success. But I looked at the most recent official forecast for the state. Over the next five years, Rhode Island will rank 42nd out of the 50 states for income growth, 44th out of 50 for economic growth, 45th out of 50 for job growth. How can you be so pleased with where things are going, with Rhode Island still expected to stay in the bottom 10? Because when I began, we had the highest unemployment rate in the country and today we have the lowest unemployment rate we've had in 20 years there's road work happening all around us there are cranes in the sky we are uh, fixing our schools and roads and bridges last year Rhode Island had the highest wage growth in the country we're not just doing as well as our neighbors number one and why do I focus on wage growth because it's not just enough to have a job you need a good job and under my leadership We've created jobs at every level, in manufacturing, in advanced technology, in construction, at every rung of the ladder. And both of these men oppose my strategy, All right, Ms. and they want to take us back to the bring, days of the highest unemployment rate in the country. I want to bring Mr. Trillo in. Mr. Trillo, like Mr. Fung, tax cuts are a key part of your platform. When you announced your campaign, you told reporters you proposed reducing the estate tax, reducing the income tax, eliminating taxes on pensions, and lowering the sales tax to 5.5%. How much do you estimate that package of tax cuts would cost in your first budget, and how would you pay for that? It's going to cost between three and four hundred million dollars. And how I would pay for it, unlike these two candidates, they don't understand how things work. One of the things I've been gifted with in my life is the ability to understand a lot of trades. I don't want to brag, but there isn't anything in the construction of this entire building that I couldn't step in and do as well as any of the contractors from the lighting to the plumbing to the cement work to the ceiling work to the air conditioning work nothing okay when you have that kind of knowledge and you step into the governor's office you don't have to listen to fairy tales like we need to spend 250 million dollars governor and they and, and, and you can say well show me where show me where bring me on a tour because as I go on that tour my meter runs okay we got a bad roof here sure does it need to be fixed or can it be repaired what I see is egregious I see them crying about a roof that leaves that could have been 
fixed and fixed for minimal amounts of money. It, but in essence, the contractors are not happy to do repairs because all we have to do is give away big contracts, give away big spending. We see that with DOT. DOT, the way it's being run in the state, and it's run under her leadership, the way it's being run is egregious. We're putting, <laughs> down, Schell, we're putting down a mix on 95 that's inferior the day we put I it down. I would not claim to have the engineering skill to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you on that, but I want to bring you back to the budget. You said, I believe, more than $300 million, you think, yeah, for your well, tax cuts. How I'm going to get it is very simple. I'm, DOT has a budget of $600 million. We only spend 100 of it on, on actually repairing the roads. The other $500 million is supposed to be staff and engineering costs. That's ridiculous. We have the highest costs of any state in the country. I want to go through every department of state government with a scalpel, and I want to fine-tune it up. Now, I'm not going to fire anybody, but we're going to do it through attrition. Every year, you have about 1,000 people retire in state government. We can do this. We can make government more efficient. You know, the, I sat in the legislature for 16 years. We kept passing laws, and our laws keep adding to the departments of their jobs. We got people working on jobs for laws that were passed 50 years ago that we, they could be moved in a more efficient place in government. All right, we, All right Mr. Trillo, thank you. I, now, candidates, I want to get to our rapid-fire section now. We don't want to belabor uh, these issues. We'd like to get through them rather quickly. Uh, as all of you know, I'm looking for one or two-word answers here. I'll start left to right, and then I'm going to alternate the order. So, Mr. Trillo, are you pro-choice or pro-life? Pro-life. Uh, Ms. Raimondo. Pro-choice. Mr. Fong. I respect the woman's right to make a medical decision with common sense limitations. Are you pro-choice or pro-life, Mr. Fong? I respect the woman's right to make a medical decision, but with common sense limitations. Can you limitations. tell us how you're leaning? Are you leaning pro-choice? You can't answer a life? question like I've that. That's your too question. difficult. All right. Um, He's both pro-life and pro-choice. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Raimondo, if you win in uh, November, would you continue to toll large commercial trucks for bridge and infrastructure repair? Yes or no? Yes. All right, Mr. Fung. Uh, no tolls. All right, and Mr. Trillo. No. As governor, Mr. Fung, would you sign or veto a bill that would keep expired public sector contracts in place until a new one is approved? Uh, veto. You would veto. Mr. Trillo. I would have to see the bill, and I would have to know that there were safeguards in it. We already do that as, as, as common practice. So without seeing the bill in front of me, I can't answer All that All right, question. Ms. Raimondo. Uh, I did veto that bill last session. Right. Um, as I said then, though, if they were provisioned to protect taxpayers, I would have signed it. All right. Uh, Ms. Raimondo, we'll stay with you. If the Legislative Commission that's currently meeting recommends legalizing marijuana in Rhode Island, would you consider it? I would consider it, but I am wary about it. We have to figure out how to regulate it so kids don't get sick and, you know, we protect young people. Okay, you would consider it. Mr. Fung. Uh, I support medical marijuana and I'm open to recreational so long as my enforcement so, concerns. So you would consider it? I'm, I would consider All it. All right, and Mr. Trillo. When we develop a test that the police officers in a stop on the highway can test for marijuana, people being under the influence of it, I would then support it to go out on the ballot for a vote. All right, let's 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 wrap up this rapid fire section with a fun one, cut through the tension a little bit. Uh, Mr. Fung, what is the best beach in Rhode Island? Scarborough. <laughs> I grew up there. All right, uh, uh, Mr. Trillo. Well, I grew up at Scarborough because half of Scarborough we have used to be my father's beach called Olivo's Beach. All right, Ms. Raimondo. Best Sand beach Hill Co. Beach. Okay, thank you. Now I want to turn it back over to my colleague, Danielle North. She is with a Roger Williams University student who has a question for the candidates. Danielle. Yeah, continuing our partnership with Roger Williams University, we want to introduce a Roger Williams University senior by the name of Kaylee Puglies, and you do have a question for our candidates. Kaylee? Yes, good evening. Um, so as you can see, Roger Williams University University is set right on the water's edge, and we are about to launch a year-long series, uh, and that's titled Ocean State, State of the Ocean, the challenge of sea level rise over the coming century. So what is the main action uh, in your position as governor to help with climate change and sea level rise? Governor, we can start with you. Thank you. By the way, thank you, and thank you for being here, and thank you to your classmates. Uh, climate change is real. It's one of the biggest threats that we face, and we can't do enough uh, to meet the challenges. Um, as I've said, we need to move as fast as we can to uh, 
100% of renewables. And so under my leadership, uh, I'm proud to be the only governor in America who can say that we have an offshore wind farm. And under my leadership, we have a contract to expand that. Uh, and we're going to create a number of jobs here, uh, building that industry here. Uh, we have put in place new energy efficiency programs. In fact, I started by leading with example at the state. And we've cut our energy use at the state by more than 10%. So there's no one silver bullet. But as you say, it's the ocean state. It's a state that we love. Everybody loves the ocean. We've all grown up going there. And, and we have to commit ourselves to being a leader in moving to renewables, protecting our ocean, keeping our bay clean, and creating jobs in the process. Thank you, Ms. Raimondo. Uh, Mr. Fung, just to remind you of Kaylee's question, she asked, what is the main action you would take as, go as governor to address sea level rise and climate change? Well, there's three actions I would take. You know, I do support renewable energy, but it can't be forced down everyone's throat like what the governor's trying uh, to do in certain pockets. You know, in Cranston, we chose to go the solar route. And I'm proud that we have the largest solar farm that's going up 21 megawatt project and there are others looking for renewable uh, projects within the city of Cranston. On top of that, we've also taken actions because we've seen devastating floods impact our city of Cranston where we're preserving open space. We've leveraged federal dollars, state dollars to buy some of the properties that quite frankly were built too close to the waterways, restoring them back to their uh, natural habitats and making sure that it's not constantly burdening our resources uh, with the first responders when they flood. And lastly, you know, we are the ocean state. I support efforts by Save the Bay and many others to clean up our waters. I remember growing up, you'd be scared to, uh, you know, swim in the bay or eat fish that was coming out of it. But now, thanks to our actions, we should do more to support their efforts to continue cleaning our bay and our ocean waste. All right, Mr. Fung, thank you. And again, Mr. Trillo, the, uh, Kay Kaylee's question, what is the main action you would take as governor to address sea level rise and climate change? Well, we already have a lot of laws on the books, and I would make sure that those laws are enforced regarding air pollution. I certainly support renewable energy. I support the concept of the wind farm. I think the wind farm has got the potential to generate a lot of electricity with a minimal amount of impact on the people in Rhode Island. That's the proposed 50 turbine wind farm off of Block Island. Um, I would only support it, I said I support it, I would only support it if the rate to the taxpayers and to the uh, utilities is going to be very competitive with what it is right now for fossil fuel. I have been assured by them that it will be. If the rate is higher and if the impact on our fishing industry is, is, is too great, then I can't support it. So I should have said I, I support it with, uh, with caution. Uh, let me uh, stick, stick with you here, Mr. Trillo, and I'm, I'm going to ask a follow-up to Kaylee's question. Do you support or oppose the Boroughville Power Plant? I oppose the Boroughville Power Plant Why? because the Boroughville Power Plant infringes on people. It's, it's a community. We're jamming it down their throat, and they shouldn't have to have another power plant in their community. So for that reason alone, I think, I think the idea is, and that's why I'd rather support the wind farm. The wind farm is many miles offshore. You're not even going to be able to see the wind farm, and it's free renewable energy. How about so you, Ms. Raimondo? Uh, you've, you've not taken a stand either way. How do you square that with um, your renewable energy push? It's very consistent. Rhode Islanders need and deserve uh, affordable, stable, clean energy. And that, as you know, Tim, is going through a regulatory process with which I cannot, will not interfere. And we have to see if it gets through the process. Let's let the facts play out. Let's let the process play out and see if it gets through the process. Uh, Mr. Fung, supporter or opposed to borrow the power Unlike plant? Unlike the governor who just ducked that question, probably because she took donations from Invernergy, who's uh, part of that project. You know, I support local control. And we are, and we are now, on, Joe, please, let's have a little space. Let's Mr. Have a Trillo, respect, let him answer the question, Joe. please. I know you want to speak all the time, but this is a debate. I support local control. 
and I want to put it on the ballot down in uh, Barville. But unfortunately, we can't because of the agency that's set up that takes it away from Barville and the residents of there. So I would not support it because many of the people in Barville don't, and I don't make decisions based on who puts campaign dollars uh, in my campaign coffers, like the governor. Mayor, it is offensive that you would say that. Uh, we all raise money. We have to. Uh, I follow the rules. I don't take free rent from the largest developer in the city of Cranston for my campaign headquarters. One thing is crystal clear. I've worked hard every day for four years for the people of Rhode Island. I answer to the people of Rhode Island, period. And everything I've ever done has been to help Rhode Islanders create more jobs. I'm with the people every day. I listen. I report to them. I answer to them. And there is no relationship between any campaign contributions and any decisions that I've made. All right, Mr. Trillo, I, I owe you a little bit of time, so I'll give you the last word on this. Yes. I think it's interesting. We have two people on this stage that have raised millions of dollars. In the case of the governor, I, I, I can't imagine anybody being a better fundraiser than she is. She's outraised everybody. Where do you think the money comes? It comes from all the special interests that control your tax dollars. The special interests are the lobbyists and the special people the, 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 the corporations that want favors. Do you think they give away large sums of money? Here's how they do it in, in Rhode Island. I witnessed it for 16 years. What they do is they run fundraisers for people. They raise $50,000 for them. They can't because we can only give $1,000 per person. They are both bought and paid for by every special interest group, and that's why nothing gets done in this state. I'm funding my own campaign, and I owe no one anything, anything. I don't even owe them a cup of coffee. Uh, and that's what they're going to get from me. Yeah, Mr. Fung, I'll give you yeah, 30 I, seconds. I, I yes. respond to both yes. of these. First, on that uh, free rent shot from the governor, which is absolutely not true, the Board of Elections, after an investigation, found and confirmed what we said. We paid our rent. And by the way, we paid it, we tried to pay it not once, but twice. And the mistake was made by the developer. And the bottom line was we were just warned on how we should account for it in our Board of Election filings. End of story. And as to Joe, Joe's your prototypical insider. While he can afford to uh, not raise money, he's been up there for 16 years cutting deals with members of the General Assembly. But most importantly, he's also taking vicious positions against you know, uh, innocent people. You know, he got thrown out of that East Greenwich Yacht Club, and what did he do? Had retaliatory legislation filed against boat owners uh, and you know, on mooring fees. You know, that's man, not that's the type of leadership that needs. That's an lie, and you know it is. That's a lie. You took a $1,000 rent that you, that you paid, you went back and paid three-year rent payments to Campionato that you had never paid, and you played stupid. Oh, they didn't cash my check. Oh, you didn't know they didn't? cash your check and, 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 and you're now in the in a place that's worth four thousand dollars a month how do I know because I own the building across the street I know what the square footage goes for so you're getting an in-kind contribution every month of three thousand dollars and it's not sure all right mr. Trillo, no, mr. Trillo, we no, have no, we no, have to we have to move on we've gone too far with this we're gonna go this to a is question why we from need Ted. to invest in K through three stronger reading because apparently the, the, Joe okay, has I, not I, read I, that I, I'm sorry. Findings. I'm sorry. That's that's enough. And I want to remind our I want to remind our audience here to please sit on your hands. We will take the time away from your candidate uh, if you can't uh, stop applauding. Go ahead, Ted. All right. Ever since the Parkland shootings last February, school safety has been a big concern for parents nationwide, including here in Rhode Island. And all three of you have released plans involving school safety. Uh, Mr. Trillo, I'm going to start with you. In your 10-point plan, you propose creating a special concealed carry permit for trained school faculty, which would give them the option to have a gun in the classroom. How do you respond to the critics who say allowing more guns in schools would make schools more dangerous rather than safer? Well, we're not just allowing guns to be in schools arbitrarily. We're not saying anybody can carry a gun. The provision of this is if you want to go through a special training program held for school employees to go through, get certified with a weapon, then you can act 
the same way a, a human office, a service officer can be in the school if you're well enough trained. You know, there's a fallacy out there that guns are the problem and they're causing all the problems in our school. Whether we had guns or whether there were no more guns, you, there's a lot of ways you can do damage. You can use bombs, you can drive vehicles into people. There's a lot of, you could use knives. There's just too many things. So going after the guns is the wrong approach. What I'm saying is allow, if there's a shooter in a school and I'm a teacher and I have a gun and I know how to use it, guess what? I'm going to be to that, to the, I'll take that student out faster than the police are ever going to get there. It's going to take them five to ten minutes to get there. They're going to run around the building and apprise the all right, situation. Mr. Trillo, I, know, I think we can, all, we can all dramatize that. Mr. Fung, you've campaigned as a strong supporter of Second Amendment's rights. Do you support Mr. Trillo's idea of a special concealed carry permit for trained school faculty? What I do support, and I think all three of us up on stage can absolutely agree, the safety of our kids is of paramount importance. It's about how we get there. Unlike the governor, I don't subscribe to just having a piece of paper that says no guns in school because that's not going to stop criminals from doing criminal acts. I was a former prosecutor. What is going to stop them is a police officer, school resources, an armed police officer at that door in the school. And that's why I released, um, you know, earlier in the week, my plan for school safety, a 50-50 share for all 306 schools if the co local community decides to go that route to provide that adequate protection. I also want to bring back retired police officers to help alleviate that burden as well because that is what is going to bring absolute security. We've done that in Cranston this past budget year to supplement the school resource officers we already have. We put in an additional $100,000 for additional police details. Parents see police officers as they're dropping them off and also other times during the school day. If, you know, take it to the extreme, take a look at why should politicians up on Smith Hill have better protection than our kids in our schools. When you see those officers, that's when you know you have a safe school environment. Governor Raimondo, you've made clear since Parkland, you've pushed for more restrictions on guns. So I want to ask you about a different aspect of Mr. Trillo's plan. He proposes placing metal detectors in school buildings. In the past, you've opposed metal detectors in schools. Why not install those to add more protection in these school buildings? Because schools shouldn't look like prisons, and schools aren't prisons. And since I've been governor, in the short time I've been governor, I've had to lower the flags 11 times for gun violence. Two weeks ago, I sat in a funeral home holding the hand of a mother who lost her teenager to gun violence. It's time for action. It's not time for politics. There's a very clear contrast between my position and my opponents. The answer is fewer guns. Fewer guns in schools, period. Uh, I tried to get the legislature to pass uh, a ban on concealed carry weapons in schools. Rhode Island is one of only a few states that allows it. When they wouldn't act, I took executive action because that's what a leader has to do to protect people. I would say I have spent an enormous amount of time listening to teachers, listening to parents, um, talking to my husband, we have two kids, we worry about them as well, and talking to public safety, listening to the state police, listening to public safety. And there's broad agreement on two things. Every kid deserves to go to a school that is gun-free and safe. Every teacher deserves to go to a school that is gun-free and safe. And the solution is fewer guns. And it is to how bad does it have to get? How many lives do we have to lose before we take action? And so I've led over and over again as governor, and I'll continue to do that. I also support a ban on military-style right, weapons. Mr. Mr. Fung, what, what is it that you disagree? You've said you disagree with the governor's approach. What do you hear there that you do not feel is the right way to go? Well, just that comparison I brought alone. You know, are you talking about the state capitol that has capitol police and metal detectors uh, should be safer than our kids going to school? Take a look at when we fly in airports. What's uh, protecting all of us? TSA agents, security, metal detectors. We cannot 
cannot uh, overlook common sense measures that would provide single points of entries into our schools, provide dollars to make sure that our kids are safe in there and have a safe learning environment. But most critically, it's those school resource officers that are there not just to patrol, but also to be a partner with the students. That's the reality of how we're going to keep our kids Thank safe. Thank you, Mr. Fung. I'm going to keep it with you, actually. Um, according to our most recent Eyewitness News Roger Williams University poll, more than half of Rhode Island voters think President Trump is doing a poor job. When you attended his inauguration, you wore a Trump hat that is now being used against you in a television ad, as I'm sure you know. We now have a year and a half of his administration in the books. Would you wear a Trump hat today? <laughs> well, let me, there is an actual interesting story uh, to that Trump hat. Because, yes, this was the first inauguration that myself and my wife ended up attending. So we were excited to go down. And we ended up getting off the train at Union Station. And all of a sudden, I hear someone yell, Mayor Fung, Mayor Fung. I thought it was odd because, you know, we were just down there. It was an individual that was selling memorabilia for the inauguration. He happened to be from Rhode Island. But you know why he was down there? Because he couldn't get a job, couldn't find uh, any sales under the Raimondo administration. So we sat with him, we had a chance to talk with him, and we purchased not only a hat, because it was a cold day, you want to take but, us also, to Newport, but man? also, but also, excuse well, me, Joe, well, excuse me, Joe, Trillo. but it's also, Joe, it's but yes or no. Joe, Do you Mr. Trillo, Joe. I, I'm the moderator in the debate, not you, Joe. Uh, Mr. Fung. We don't need a loudmouth in uh, Smith Hill again. Uh, you know what? A loudmouth might get something done other than a, a wimpy guy like you. Are we back in elementary school yeah, with these smart are. aleck attacks? No, but then my wife bought, you know, a scarf. So that's the real story. Okay, but what about now? What if you ran into that vendor again? Would you wear it now? Huh? The bottom line is I bought it, and the real story behind it is the lack of an economy, the growth in Rhode Island because of the governor, and this individual from, I think he was in Coventry, down in Washington, D.C. Let me ask it a different way. What policies do you disagree with with President Trump? There's actually some policies that I do. I did not agree with him with the separation of the kids from their families. So that's clearly one. All right, uh, Mr. Trillo, I'm going to go to you on this one. You were the co-chair of the Trump uh, campaign I, I in Rhode was, Island. Excuse Are, me, uh, I wasn't the co-chair. I was the chair. There was no other chair. Okay, you were the chair of the Trump campaign in Rhode Island. Thank you for the correction. Our poll finds those who support the president are likely not voting for Ms. Raimondo. And look, uh, Mr. Trillo, Republicans say you're just a spoiler for Mr. Fung and are doing little more than boosting the governor's re-election chances. What do you say to that? I say to that, make no mistake about it, I'm in this race to win it. Uh, I'm not in it as a spoiler, and I would look right in their, in their eyes and tell them that. We, I'm tired of the party politics, and by leaving the Republican Party, and I'm not the first one that left the Republican Party. If you look back eight years ago, we had another Republican actually leave the Republican Party and run as an independent, and guess what? He won. So what I'm doing right now is not so rare. The other thing is look at the the parties. Look at where the Republican Party is today. Look at where the Democratic Party is today. You can't get them to agree on anything. And I think it's egregious. It's unfair to the taxpayers. It's unfair to the citizens of this country. You want to experience it firsthand? Watch Fox News for two hours and then switch to MSNBC. Mr. Trillo, do you deny you're if drawing you votes from Mr. Fung or do you, do you acknowledge that? Excuse me? Do you deny or acknowledge you draw votes from Mr. Fung? I want to draw votes from the both of them. Okay. As an independent, I believe I can get Democrats who are tired of the progressive movement of which this governor supports. All right, Ms. Raimondo, let's uh, shift to you now. One of the things you've touted is the Amgen expansion in West Greenwich. Executives at Amgen have credited Mr. Trump's tax cuts as a key reason they're doing that project here in Rhode Island. Should you be thanking the Trump administration for that? No. Uh, no. By the way, I do want to take issue with uh, what Mayor Funk says about the economy. Let's just look at the facts. We have the lowest unemployment rate in nearly 20 years. We have a record number of jobs in our state. There is more road work happening now than at any point in my lifetime. 
The fact there are cranes in the sky. We've trained 3,000 people through our new approach to job training. Ms. The Ramon, fact sorry, is, you, you said all of this already earlier move. in the debate. Why would executives at Amgen credit uh, the Trump tax cuts if you don't? I think what they said is that on account of some of the tax cuts, it gave them an incentive to bring some of their cash back to America. Mm -hmm. And I think that is true. But they chose Rhode Island. They could have gone anywhere. They, In fact, it was very competitive. Uh, some of the programs I've started that the mayor wants to unwind enable that to happen. That would mean that, you know, that's the creation of hundreds of high paying manufacturing jobs that wouldn't happen if he became governor. They chose Rhode Island over other states because of what we have going on. Actually, they mainly chose us because of our job training programs, the talent we have. They want to hire Rhode Islanders. That's why companies come here. They want to hire our people. Finally, you, you can't deny the national economy is humming right now. Yes, but our economy is doing better than average. We have the number one wage growth in America. Our progress isn't by accident, and our progress isn't because of the president. Our progress is because we came together four years ago and decided to change the way we do things, change the way we invest in infrastructure, change the way we invest uh, in economic development and small businesses, and the fact of the matter is, it's working. Let's talk about the cost. We're, 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 we're running, we only running have about time. five or seven minutes. Fifteen, go. Fifteen. You know, the governor in a rosy fairy tales belies the fact that even just last month we lost 2,400 jobs. We've created 4,000 in Cranston. She's also taken our, her eye off the ball uh, with these incentives. Alexion gone, Pinnacle gone, that's not leadership. All right. So but can we go, ten we seconds. announced a new company to take the place of where Alexion left. That's leadership, that's action. Action, the lights are on in that building, and that's the commitment I have to the people of Rhode Island. All right, candidates, we have very little time left. No, Mr. Trillo, no. Mr. Trillo, we're going to move on. I'll, I'll give you the question, though, Mr. Trillo. Uh, the Paw Sox are leaving. We all know it. What would you have done differently, if anything, from Governor Raimondo during those negotiations? Well, I think it showed, showed poor leadership uh, with the Poor Sox leaving. I think that the governor's to blame. I think the Speaker of the House is to blame. I think the Senate President, because they should have all got together in one room with the Poor Sox and worked the deal out. You know, we were talking about, and I'm not in favor of putting taxpayers' dollars at risk, but we were talking about 21, 27 million dollars, 30 million dollars, whatever that number is. This governor lost 635 million dollars with you have. She lost $500 million with the pension reform, with her investments, and those yielded her millions of dollars in campaign contributions. So we lost the Red Sox for $30 million. When you put it into perspective, it just is crazy. And we're out buying, she's out buying jobs by the millions of dollars to get companies to come into Rhode Island. So I think it was very badly handled. You know what happens? Nobody has the Briefly, guts. Nobody has the guts to take leadership. Everybody's only interested in getting reelected. It's all about getting reelected. Say and do anything you can. Get reelected. Go on to the next thing. All right, Mr. Trillo. Mr. Monday, your response. Just one quick thing. We aren't buying jobs. We're using. You know, I, when I came into office, I had to move us away from the 38 Studios type of special deals for special people. The taxpayers got stuck holding the bag on that and no jobs. These programs are, we changed the way we're doing it. We copy what Massachusetts and other states have done. Here's the key point. They don't get a dime until after the jobs are created or the building is built and people are hired. This isn't about politics, it's about Rhode Islanders who deserve good, high paying jobs, All right, and a lot of them weren't working when I started. To the Paw Sox question, though, yes. and Mr. Trillo's critique of how you handled that. Yes, yeah, so I'm very sad the Paw Sox left. You know, I grew up going to the games, I think we probably all did. Uh, I did everything I knew how to do on that. Uh, my, my administration negotiated a deal with the team, a deal that the team said they would have taken. The ownership team said, that they would have taken it. But then it sat in the legislature for a year and a half. Doesn't that go to your leadership? No, that goes to the legislature's failure to take action. And all of us tried, the mayor tried, I tried, the team tried, and the House in particular would not take action for over a year and a half. At the end of the day, this was about money. 
the paw socks went to Worcester because they got a lot more money from taxpayers. It, it was my job to protect the taxpayer. And I'm as sad as anyone that the paw socks are gone. But it would have been irresponsible to compete with the Worcester deal because it was too much taxpayer money. So now we turn to the future of Pawtucket. I'll commit to the people of Rhode Island that I won't rest until Pawtucket, until McCoy is full full with another team, maybe a baseball team, a soccer team, a concert venue. Let's lean into Pawtucket and the Blackstone Valley and look to the future. Mr. Fung, you, you criticized Speaker Mattiello's legislation for a new ballpark that, that came up in the final month of the session, but you've also criticized Governor Raimondo for the team leaving. What would you have done differently that you think could have kept the team here? I actually agree with what uh, Representative Trillo actually said, that it's a failure of leadership on all parts, particularly the governor, because she sits as the CEO. And we've all seen historically when she wants to get something done, especially negative on us, raising taxes, fees on every single budget she's passed, tolls that she's implemented, or even free student tuition, she's out there leading the charge, and she didn't do it in this instance. We heard directly from Mayor Gravian, as well as those Paw Sox officials, that they didn't do what Joe said sit in the room. That's what I would have done from day one, had all the stakeholders at the table telling them, here's what I would have offered. The same deal like Kraft did uh, with the state of Massachusetts. You pick up the cost of the stadium, I will pick up the cost on the infrastructure and surrounding economic development. Take a look at how it's uh, flourishing up there. But there was none of that because they never sat at the table together. And Joe's also right. There's so much failure of leadership. Not only there, he missed actually one. DCYF. Eight kids All right, dead I don't want to get off of the paw socks, uh, Mr. Fung. It's total Ms. I'll lack go back to you in a second, Mr. Mundo. But Mr. Fung, you criticized the governor on that, but th the reporters who were there would say that the person who was most important on that was a Cranston politician, Speaker Mattiello, who was the deciding factor. Why do you only criticize the governor and no, not I the speaker? I criticized all of them. I said they all should have been at the table. That's what I would have done. I've done that. Have all the stakeholders. Did you talk to Speaker Mattiello about it? Not about that. But I can tell you that they should have all been together Candace, from day we, one. We have just two minutes left. I, I can't, Ms. Ramondo, I'm sorry. I want to make sure each of you can get to your closing uh, statement. So I'm going to ask you each a question. I, I'm looking for a very brief answer, maybe 30 seconds each. We've got to talk to you about this. Just today, Republican Governor of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker, said the accusations against Supreme Court uh, Judge nominee uh, Judge Kavanaugh deserve an independent investigation and there should not be a vote. Briefly, yes or no? Do you agree with Governor Baker the sh uh, Senate should hold off on a vote until an independent investigation into Dr. Christine Blasey Ford is conducted? Mr. Fung, we'll start with you. You know, I heard Dr. Ford's testimony and it was very compelling. And I also heard Judge Kavanaugh as well, found him credible. So yes, there should be an outside, there should be a pause for, on a vote and uh, there should be an outside investigation just to sort everything out and interview additional witnesses. Mr. Trillo, do you agree with Mr. Fung? Ditto with Mr. Fung. I agree 100%. Okay, are we going to have agreement here, Ms. Raimondo? That, yes, uh, absolutely. All right. Yes. You know, I, I do actually have another minute because you were so quick. Um, as you know, the Providence uh, school bus drivers went on strike today, disrupting thousands of parents and students. Uh, in Rhode Island, teachers aren't allowed to strike by law. Should that also be true of school bus drivers? Mr. Trillo. Yeah, I think it should be because they're able to shut down the schools. So I think they're a very important part of the schools uh, being able to operate. I think it, they should have the same uh, requirement that teachers have. But the problem is that the contract is not specifying that. And do we want to give them those kind of benefits? Can the city of Providence afford to give them those kind of benefits in order to get them in that kind of a 30 contract? 30 seconds, Ms. Raimondo. Uh, it's something I'd be open to, although it, it is different. These are private employees of a private company, not public employees. So, But the fact of the matter is, I really hope the parties settle as quickly as possible because I know it's a hard job to be a bus driver, but this is, and they deserve a fair contract, but this is causing unbelievable inconvenience for moms and dads and kids. 30 seconds, Mr. Fung. Inconvenience, it's more than inconvenience. You know, it is a fair leadership, even at the local level. The mayor, even the governor shouldn't have been to ensure that some of those kids with disabilities had a way to get to school. We heard about one story about someone not being able to get to school with uh, should disabilities. Should they be uh, prevented? from being able to strike by law is yes. the question. Yes, they should. All right. Now, each candidate will have a one-minute closing statement, the order of which was drawn randomly prior to this debate. First up, Mr. Trillo. Mr. Trillo, your one-minute closing statement. Thank you. 
This election represents a real choice to the people and the taxpayers of this state. We have a choice between whether we want to elect flip-flop Fung or give away Gina. Um, whatever you do, it's never going to change the direction of this state. The only way you're going to get the, the direction of this state changed is to elect a guy like me. Remember, the lobbyists control this state. I saw them for 16 years. These two are controlled by the lobbyists. One of the things that I've been able to do is I've been able to be a real fighter. Some people say sometimes I'm too loud, and I know I'm too loud. But when I get in there to fight and argue, that's what I do. I get in there to drive my point across. Um, and I will do that for you, the taxpayers. I will be your lobbyists in the, in the state house. I'm not your typical politician. Uh, I know how things work, which will save you hundreds and hundreds of, million dollar, uh, of millions of dollars. And don't forget, I am in this to win this. Thank you, Make Mr. No Trillo. Mistake. Your one minute is up. Mr. Fung, your one minute closing statement. Yeah. You know, we don't need more state house insiders like Mr. Trello, and especially not the governor. And this election for governor isn't about what's going on in Washington, D.C., as people want to frame it. It's about what's going on in Washington Park, in Westerly, and in Woonsocket. And we all know the numerous Ramundo mistakes that have hurt so many of us. And that's not the road we need to continue down. We can do better. And my plan for Rhode Island keeps our kids safe with school resource officers. And my plan calls for common sense reforms like tougher work requirements for able-bodied people on welfare. And my plan for Rhode Island holds government accountable for waste and fraud with an inspector general. The hardworking landscaper in Middletown will have the same access to me and my administration as the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. And it's not going to take thousands in campaign contributions like the governor. I'll make this a Rhode Island you can be proud of. And as a boy who grew up in the south side of Providence, worked in his family's restaurant, and worked nights to pay for his college, I humbly ask for your vote. Thank you, Mr. Fung. Now, Ms. Raimondo, your one-minute closing statement. Thank you. It's an honor to be your governor, and I've worked hard every day for the past four years to bring change to Rhode Island and change the way we do things. Four years ago when we started, it didn't look so good. We had one of the highest unemployment rates in the country, roads and bridges falling apart, and not even a plan to fix them. So we got to work. We got to work together. And today, we have more road work than at any time in history and people working in good jobs fixing the roads. We have the highest wage growth in America and the lowest unemployment rate in over 20 years. My opponents oppose the change we've been bringing. They want to take us back to the old way of doing things and they want to slam the brakes on our economic recovery. And neither of them has the courage to stand up to President Trump when his policies hurt Rhode Islanders. So tonight I'm asking you for your support. I'm asking you for your vote. And I'm asking you for a chance, a chance to finish the job we've started. Thank you, Ms. Raimondo. Now to our studio, studio audience, your opportunity to applaud the candidates. Make sure you head right over to Facebook Live to weigh in with your reaction to tonight's debate. My colleague Danielle North will have instant reaction with a panel of students. That's moments away on Facebook Live, and we will, of course, have complete coverage tonight on Eyewitness News at 11. I want to thank Roger Williams University for hosting this event, and I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the late Don Farish, who is president of the university, and he championed this partnership he would have truly loved tonight. Remember, Eyewitness News is your local election headquarters with complete campaign coverage on WPRI 12 and WPRI.com. Ted Nisi and I will be back on October 9th for a debate between the candidates for U.S. Senate. For Danielle North, Ted Nisi, I'm Tim White. Thank you for watching and good night.